What's going on guys? This is Nick from Budget Bill Garage and really quick um, I wanted to show you the new power plant for the Pro Street El Camino build. Um, originally I was going to go with the 355 with the Pro Charger. That's not panning out for me. I was a little bit worried about running the small block. I didn't feel like I had enough cubic inches to achieve the power level I really wanted safely. Um, for big power, really big blocks are where it's at. So. The other problem I ran into, which kind of helped with this, was mounting the Pro Charger. So, on the last episode about the Pro Charger, I told you I was going to call them up, see if I could get brackets. I did. They wanted like 1500 bucks for the bracketry. It was a universal bracketry, and it reclocked my Pro Charger, which I didn't like. Um, and even then, I had to send them the Pro Charger, ship it to them so they can break it open and rotate the insides of it because there's an oil slinger in there that supplies the whole thing with oil. I didn't want to do that, so instead what I did is decided to track down the serpentine setup it's actually supposed to go on. I actually had a couple friends, um, Wyatt and Travis actually, they hunted the this piece down for me. They found it in a junkyard. It was attached to a big block. So we went out there and they were like, let's just get the big block too. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. And that kind of sealed the whole small block versus big block because I had been going back and forth on it for a while trying to decide what I really wanted to do. Um, the thing with the 355 is I had everything for it. It was ready to go. So it still got machined and it's still doing something, but, uh, that's a different problem. This thing is the Mark six big block. It's a four bolt main. We found it in the truck and we pulled the whole thing out, dude. It took forever. It was a pain in the ass. I don't do that well in the heat. Actually, I didn't want to do it. Like halfway through, I ended up getting sick and throwing up and like, I wanted to give up. And Travis was like, no, I'm going to pull this thing out. Don't worry about it. And Travis and Wyatt did a lot of the work, I have to admit, because I was ready to give up and I wasn't having it. But I'm glad that worked out because after that, we got the big block home. And my buddy called me and said he had a running big block and he needed a core to send to ATK because he had just bought a new crate motor. So I swapped that block for this block, took this thing to the machine shop and... Had it checked out and had it gone through and it was bored and it was line honed and uh, it was chamfered and it was all the fun stuff. Um, it actually had to go through the wash like four times because it was stuff in the block that just didn't want to come out um, and like the water passages and everything. So that sucked. I don't know how much everyone pays for machining like in other states. California is kind of an expensive labor area. So really for like a basic machine job you're looking at about 800 to 1200 dollars depending what you want to do and what they're going to charge you for for doing um you want to go ahead and prep it before you drop everything off of course like pull out the freeze plugs pull out all of those pipe fittings anything you can get out and do they charge you for that unfortunately a bunch of mine were stuck and had to actually be destroyed and pulled out and everything so they did that and i think that's like 10 or 12 bucks per plug which sucks but whatever so I ended up being, after everything, with new cam bearings and all the machine work and decking it, and I'm about a thousand bucks even into this deal. So that's what I'm into for this. The important thing is, though, the Pro Charger. This setup holds the Pro Charger. It mounts it perfectly. I currently have it on my motor plate because I'm going to tie the motor plate into the roll cage. I'm not going to use motor mounts. I'm using the plate, and I'm using a mid plate, and it's pretty awesome because I can hang everything off there like it is now bolted to the front of the engine and that's pretty much it dude it's it's really easy it's really convenient and also like I was saying when they wanted to reclock it instead of it coming out here it comes out over here I'm gonna use an intercooler with this deal so I wanted it to come out there so it can go forward through my radiator core support into my intercooler back out the other side and up into the intake so I got lucky there and um as far as the block that we got out of the junkyard, I think that we paid up $250 for the block and then I had to buy the accessories off of that, which weren't that much. So all together, I want to say maybe $300 and that's what you would expect to pay getting a block out of a junkyard. We took it with the heads and everything though because we didn't have all the tools to break everything loose. We took it with the... <laughs> we took it with the heads, we took it with everything. We took the intake off because it was mammoth and we didn't need it. But we couldn't get the, the torque converter off because the thing was seized. Not seized, but somebody had pulled all the rod cap ends off so we couldn't rotate it. And we ended up just pulling the whole thing. And I had to pay for that, which sucks. But it was like 10 bucks, but it's worthless. Can't do anything with it. But, I mean, honestly, I was ready to put this thing together. Um, but I ran into a problem. 
I bought the rotating assembly from CNC Machinery. I ended up going with the forged scat crank, um, forged rods. I got Icon pistons. They got a 12cc dome on them. It's a badass. It's a badass setup, actually. I got the ARP bolts. It's supposed to be good for way over a thousand horsepower, and I plan on trying to get pretty close to that. So. The problem I ran into is they sent me the wrong crank. Turns out there was another guy with the same last name as his first name. So they sent him my crank. I got his crank. Um, this is a 496, so the crank is bigger. Like a 454 has a 4 inch stroke. This has a 4 and a quarter inch stroke. Luckily, even though it was the wrong crank, it was just for the wrong generation. So it had the two piece mainsail instead of the one. I was still able to put it in so I can mock up one of the rods so I can make sure I had full clearance in the block so if I had to grind anything out before, I wanted to do that before I took it to the machine shop, which was good. So everything clearanced, everything was fine. You don't want to do it after because then you got to worry about cleaning the whole thing up. So I did that. The only thing keeping this from going together at this point is I don't have my crank due to the COVID stuff. They had to order a new one from SCAT, they had to get it, and then they have to rebalance it because they balance it there. These are like neutrally balanced and internally balanced, so I don't have, I run a, that's not important. I'm going to go ahead and file down my rings and everything, and so this thing will just be ready to slap together. I got the cam, I got everything. This thing's ready to go. This thing's ready to be bolted on. And then I'll do another video. I'll do the whole assembly on video then. I wanted to do it this video, but without the crank. I'm kind of stuck. So either way, this is the power plant. That's my current problem. I don't have a crank, but we solved the other issue with the Pro Charger mounting, and I'm very happy about that. I'm also very happy to be going with a 496 instead of a 355. This thing is bitchin', and I'm excited. So uh, yeah, as soon as my crank gets here, I'll do another video. Um, I'll probably file one ring on camera. You don't need to see them all. So you can see how I do it. And then really, man, that's it. We'll just toss this thing together and I need to get going farther on that car so we can get it tossed in the car. Stuff's coming along quick. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are into it. Um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next episode.